there's so many different phrases to it. What makes you tick? What gives you a buzz? What gets you going? What you know, there's something within somebody that brings them alive. You could be having a bad day, but we can talk about something you like and that will start lighting you up because that's just you. And for me, I think one of the things that gives me a buzz is cars, mechanics of a car, the engine of a car, what makes a car work. When you start talking about, yeah, the engine needs air, you need to mix it with fuel, 16.9 to 1 ratio. This is a boom, a light up, you know. And I light up because I'm thinking, oh, I need to learn more. Do you understand? Rather than, oh, I'm going to share more, I'm thinking, wow, I need to learn. So I become very attentive to what the person is saying. With the limited time I've got, I try to do friends' cars, people's cars. Sometimes people will come to me and say, oh, charge me for doing this or that. But I never want money to become, or I don't want money yet to become the factor in it because I'm using that opportunity as a learning opportunity. So if somebody gives me their car, I'm always grateful. I'm more grateful than they are grateful for me fixing it because I'm thinking, you don't know how you're trusting me with the opportunity to learn how to fix this for you. My schedule hours ideally is from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And the workers for the children will start coming in at 8.30. Before, they used to come in at 8 because they knew that they have to get a lot of stuff ready. But now that they know that when they come, things will be ready, they come in a little bit later, which that's just what I want to see. That's how I look at it. I think, okay, they're going to come in at 8.30. And I want to make sure I'm finished before they come in. So I kind of work backwards. Even if I have to start at five, I'll start at five to finish on at the time. Because when I'm done, I just want to be there, just available in case they need anything and just watch people who's coming in and out, you know. So for the church that I also work for, I am currently the technical director. So what that involves is we've got certain departments that we've got the audio department, we've got the IT department, we've got, well, audio visual department. And I basically, because the rest of them are volunteers, I oversee the departments. And I find it so interesting that to be able to teach and give somebody knowledge, you first need to know it. Sometimes you learn more from teaching somebody stuff like that some of the departments i get a buzz from like when i'm doing something to do with sound like the camera that's why i'm asking questions focus this how do you do this you know I, because there's just so much knowledge to learn when a car develops a problem the car's computer or brain doesn't understand it all it sees is that oh the car is running slow. Da, da, da. So it starts throwing all these warnings like, oh, I've got a headache. You know, but it's like, why have I got a headache? Is it because I'm not resting or is it because somebody hit me on the head? You know, so all the car does is it just throws you all these symptoms and you have to try and find out. You have to read between it. Even with modern cars, sometimes it tries to give you a solution, but you have to try and read the solutions to see whether is this really the solution. That's the thing with a car. So many components, so many things, but it's like in life, it's not everything you get to understand. So it's not everything about the car I get to understand, but the moment a car breaks down, it's like straight away, why is it broken now? Let's look at it. Let's do this. Let's try and find it. That just brings me alive. Troubleshooting. Yeah, that's it. Troubleshooting. That and it's anything. Like if you were talking about this, I would I'll just be watching. So you go, okay, how's this being done? What's this? Because I'm gathering information maybe for troubleshooting. I don't know. Falling in love with you. 
make people and stories make places come alive. A special person called Doreen Massey, she saw that you shouldn't really see a place as just being flat surface, that you should actually, I think there's a wonderful sort of quote in here, you should actually see um, a place as um, being a pincushion of a million stories. Going back to sort of 1983, I remember walking in and the floor wasn't even finished. Some of the floorboards were kind of still about to be sort of, you know, put down properly. And uh, there was this great sense of excitement. And, um, and then a new management committee was formed and I left for a little bit. And then um, several community manager, uh, centre managers later um, who'd found it a little bit of a challenge um, suddenly said, Will you, can you please apply for the job? Please, <laughs> which I did. I never assumed I was going to get it, but I did. And so I've actually been the centre manager since July 1985. Well, I, I'm Aston, uh, table tennis coach at the Sidings Community Centre. It's the martial arts of table tennis, and there are seven golden rules. Okay, first of all, you need to understand table tennis is an ancient game invented by the Chinese and Japanese. It's played from naught up to 21, and it goes ping, pong, ping, pong. the old joke about how do you make a Maltese cross? Okay. It's very easy, you just stamp on their foot. My name is Aston Stewart. I currently work at the Sidings Community Centre where no wicked could never enter. So I've been in the business for over 35 years. I know a few of the young people in the local vicinity in the area. Well, not just young people, but their parents too. I suppose they're young. <laughs> when I started, I was a bigger brother, but now I'm the uncle. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it. 
you for it, and you're like a social activist. Primarily, young people meet, have this as a meeting place for them. Uh, this is my era, one of my areas, I should say, yes. Uh, the sports, as you can see, is very urban. They've got the graffiti. Uh, it's a place of belonging, and it's also a place of belonging for them, where they could put their own tags. It's also art. Art, dance, and sports, to me, they're kind of vital. It goes together. You know, people can find themselves within those. It's a form of discipline. When you see someone do it properly, like over sprinting, football, embodies your emotions there, and actions speak louder than what words can speak. I can know people, anyone, adults and young people, from the actual sports, could be sport and a dance, just how they move, how they react. So for example, if I say to come at three o'clock, you come at 10 to three. Yeah? If you come 10 past three or after three o'clock, you're disrespecting yourself. Because you can have um, control of yourself, not what someone else is saying. I would like young people to get to know themselves. So once you know yourself, you know, if you want to do bad, it's badness over there. If you want to do good, do goodness over there. But you can't do bad with knives, guns or bums. If you have a choice, then um, you have options. Some people don't have any choice. They do things because they have to. Are you telling me that they can't see what's in the local vicinities, i.e. the betting shops, all the betting shops in the inner city areas there? So why don't they get rid of some of these um, social things that, uh, well, let people out of pocket? Why not see these things in some other areas? Part of having a choice is education. I don't specifically mean um, universities and college People also get their education from the sidewalk university, you know, the streets, you know, the Zinc Fence Academy, you know, and uh, just as wise as everyone else. There needs to be an understanding. If you understand someone, you can have a communication with your friends, good. If you speak in the same language, oh, you can be in love with them. Oh, yes, that's what they are, yes, you see. What comes in your body can come out. So eat good, live good, do good, sleep good. And try to help the next person. And you will see, it's like a combination, it's everlasting. Young Chris is into everything. It is the first time he is going here, going here. I said, I've got to be Olympic champion to look at where he is. But yeah, yeah, he loves his sports, especially his football. He's always kicking the ball around. There it is. Amen. Well done, Amen. Oh, 
That's it, Tristan. Better. Oh, unlucky Chris. Nearly Chris, nearly ice cream. I come to a play scheme in like all of the half terms and I started doing that when I was like six. Because like when I was five I was allowed to join but I didn't really want to. Um, but when I was six all of my cousins were going so I wanted to go. I like playing in goal, but if I'm not playing in goal, I most probably play striker. Player of the season. I'm someone that comes regularly, brings their kit, oh, brings their Chris. water, Chris. doesn't complain, Christopher. yeah, and he's got good attitude. Yeah, young Christopher. Well done. Oh, how do I know? I have a wizard man. Tell me you're coming soon. You're coming soon. That one. Hopefully. Okay. We go on trips everywhere as well, and like even when we're not going on trips, we'll come here or we'll go over to the pitch. So it's a lot of fun. This is the ice cream I promise the kids every time if they're good. But don't tell them. So, when I started going to the play centre, um, the first person I saw was Ashton. Everything in equilibrium. Work, rest, and play. Work, rest, and play. From New Zealand, the team after, and I didn't know. And on, on Wednesday, we up, you know. That was the, the Windmill Theatre, and Mrs. Henderson originally owned it, and then she passed it on in her will. I said, I can sing, and I said, I can dance, and he said, all right, you've got the job. So I didn't audition, I just went into his room, his office, and he said, turn round and walk up and down, and I did, and he said, okay, start on Monday. And the director of, of 
me singing was a very, he was quite a well-known director and he, and he wrote songs for me. So I, I was there for six years doing six shows a day. That's a good finish. Mm -hmm. There. There. Yeah. That's automatic from there. Close there. Yeah. 